ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. And thank you for subscribing to the latest edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I am your boy, 12 Kyle. Check this out. (laughs) On this episode, what I want to talk about is turbulence. Now, before you get ahead of yourself, I want to talk about turbulence and how it relates to not just in the air, but on the ground. Uh, I came to this uh, topic because I was sitting on a conference call the other day at work and um, the person that was speaking, they mentioned the word turbulence. And it got me to thinking about my experiences with turbulence. Um, I fly quite a bit. Um, sometimes I fly for work and, you know, so being in the airplane, you, you're used to turbulence. I'll, I'll be honest. When I first started flying, uh, back in the day when I was probably like in middle school, um, the first time I experienced turbulence, it scared the hell out of me because I didn't know what it was. I didn't know why was this plane shaking. <laughs> the plane kind of dipped a little bit and, you know, that was nerve wracking to me because I have a bad stomach. So like, I'm not even like people that get on roller coasters and stuff and enjoy the dips in the roller coaster. I, I can't do it. I, I don't even get on roller coasters <laughs> at amusement parks because I my stomach can't take it. Um, but that experience, or at least the experience of turbulence, um, was one that I never really got used to. And I mean, I'll be honest, I'm not even used to it now for as much as I fly. But the flip side of it is that, you know, you, you kind of know how to deal with it, I guess, to some degree. Um, but it got me to thinking because the person who was speaking in the conference call at work mentioned the word turbulence. And I immediately started thinking about my experiences with turbulence and then also the turbulence that we go through sometimes on the ground. Um, Now, you don't need me to give you the definition of what turbulence is, but, you know, turbulence occurs in the air. Rough patches of air um, that push a plane uh, while in the air. Um, So it got me to thinking, you know, a couple of questions. Question number one, are you prepared for turbulence? Now, here's the thing. The answer to that question when it comes to an airplane, you usually are prepared because what happens is the pilot will get on the um, PA system and he'll, he or she will tell you, um, hey, we're flying into Houston today. You know, it's clear skies. 72 degrees, uh, we'll, we'll experience some rough air over the Mississippi, but, you know, other than that, it should be a smooth flight. So he lets you know in advance that, hey, when we get to Mississippi, it might get a little choppy, but, you know, we're going we're gonna to be okay, right? And that's cool because he let you know. Um, and I remember distinctly uh, <laughs> one time, I was, this is probably about 10, 15, no, probably about 14 years ago. I was flying from Minneapolis back to Atlanta. And what was interesting was we were flying and it was, it was cool. It was a cool flight. And we got about halfway to Atlanta and I was sitting on the wing. And uh, I remember hearing the engines cut off. And I'm like, we're at 30 something thousand feet. Why why is he cutting the engines off? Like that didn't make any sense to me at that particular time. And he did that. The pilot did that because we were about to hit some rough air and it was no need for us trying to speed through it. We were just going to have to coast through it. And the pilot instructed the uh, flight attendants to be seated. And this is the first time that I've ever seen flight attendants in mid-flight have to go sit down. So I'm seeing all of this and I'm bugging. I'm like, yo, what the hell's going on here, right? 
and the flight attendants sit down and we're just, it is the bumpiest of bumpy rides. And the plane was just dropping. Didn't drop that far, but it, you know, a, a little drop for me is a lot. So it's not something I'm ever used to. And again, it's not something that I never ever got comfortable with being on a plane. And to me, what was even more scarier was that it was, you know, it was dark, so I couldn't see the ground. Like I, in a plane, I'm okay if I can see the ground. Now I know we're up 30,000 feet, so I know we're not going to hit the ground, but it's just like the anxiety of flying and, and the whole nine and the turbulence was really, really getting to me at that particular time. And so Obviously, you know, we got through the turbulence, but it was a, it was an extremely bumpy flight. We probably went through about 20 minutes of turbulence, which is a relatively long time. It was the winter time and, you know, I don't know what what was happening underneath the plane as far as weather was concerned, but it was it was tough, right? And so but we were prepared because the the pilot told us hey, we're going to experience some rough air here. But what about on the ground? You know, do you ever find yourself being fearful or anxious? You know, your anxiety kicks in about negative things that you know are going to happen. Um, You know, like I said, in a plane, most instances, you know ahead of time when the turbulence is coming. But what about the turbulence that we experience on the ground? How do you deal with bad things that happen? How do you deal with the rough patches? How do you deal with things like, I don't know, the loss of a job or the loss of a loved one or a divorce? You know, so it, those are just a couple of things that, like, they didn't tell us about this stuff when we were growing up. Like, that's, that's the part of adulthood that they don't tell that they don't tell you about, right? And so. Subsequently, that's turbulence. It's bad turbulence. So how do you handle it? I mean, it's one thing to be prepared for the the rough air going over a particular state or going through a storm or what have you in the air because the pilot told you, hey, we just came from, you know, Houston and we on the flight over, it was like this and it was it's gonna be like that going back. So you you can kind of mentally and physically prepare yourself for, you know the worst, if you will. But what happens when you have turbulence in life? What happens when you have turbulence on land? Um, Like I said, dealing with the loss of a job, which can, and for a lot of people, will happen. Uh, A loved one. I mean, that's almost inevitable, to be honest. Um, I mentioned divorce. Got a ton of friends who got divorced. And so now everything's kind of gets shaken up and your world gets flipped upside, flipped upside down. So how do you handle that? How do you handle that turbulence? Um, there could be a lifestyle turbulence for you on the ground uh, in the way of kids, having kids. Uh, and while that's not anything bad, that's actually good turbulence. But it, again, it, it changes your route. It changes everything as far as your emotion is concerned. Um and it's not something that you can really prepare for. You just have to go through it. You know, it's just like any other turbulence. You kind of got to go through it. Um, so my thing is like, the one of the things that I always try to do is, how can I put a positive spin on, the tur- on your turbulence? How do you put a positive spin on turbulence? Because when you're going through turbulence, particularly on land, you kind of feel like it's the end of the world, right? But it's not. The reality is, is that you're not going to go through something that nobody else has never gone through. So if you're going through a divorce, you're not the only person to ever go through a divorce. You're not the first, and damn it, you won't be the last. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, like I said, losing a loved one, that's that's a an extremely tough turbulence. You're not the first. You definitely won't be the last. Like I said, people lose jobs every day, B. (laughs) It happens. You know, but my thing is, how do you put a positive spin on it? Um, The thing that I think you have to keep in mind is that 
even though it feels like it's the end of the world, it's not. Now, I know that's easier said than done. And I know that's easier for somebody who's not going through turbulence to speak on how you should feel about it. But trust me, we've all been through similar things and inevitably it'll get to you at some point. Um, But here's the thing I, I, I like to tell people. The one thing we know about the world and life, it goes on. <laughs> I mean, it goes on. The world's going to keep spinning. And if we're being honest, people don't care as much as you think that they do. And people don't care as much as they say that they do because they really don't. That's just being real. And so I think the key thing is not to get caught up in that. Because when you get caught up in that, it, it it takes away from your focus and everything else. Um, Because like I said, the world's going to keep spinning. <laughs> and people, while they they may have good intentions, people don't care as much as you think they do. Question number two, how do you handle turbulence? Um, On a plane... For some people, it's cool. Like you, and you can always tell. Like that's one of the the, the most interesting things I think that you can see on a flight. Uh, when there is turbulence, there's a section of people who are as cool as the other side of the pillow, who are as comfortable as everything. Doesn't bother them. Doesn't rattle them. Doesn't shake them. They are just. They could be sitting there reading the newspaper. They could be reading on their tablet, uh, watching a movie, and they are acting as if nothing is happening. And then there are people like me (laughs) who are white-fisted and grabbing the armrest or grabbing the hand of, you know, their companion or loved one or what have you. Um, I remember, where were we going? I think we were going to Jamaica. We, yeah, we were going to Jamaica for our honeymoon, Sharice and I. Um, and we left Atlanta and hit some turbulence. And I just remember just gr- squeezing her hand. And she just got the biggest laugh out of that because she'd never seen me, like, fearful. But I was, this turbulence, was, it was it was crazy. I was just like, yo, what's this dude? I mean, like, it's it's almost like we were flying through a storm and this guy was just trying to get there so he could catch the game or something. I don't know what he was doing, but it was wild. But, you know, for me to grab her hand and hold her hand extensively and, and she just thought that was funny because she'd never seen me shook, but I was a little shook. I ain't going to, I'm not even going to lie and say that I wasn't. Um, But yeah, how do you handle turbulence? So that's how you handle it in the air, I guess. Um, But, you know, I think, how you handle it on the ground really depends on who you are as a person. Um, I think sometimes the most chaotic times are the times where, at least for me, times where I can flourish. Um, And and I'll I'll share with you a story. Um, As many of you know, I I played football in uh, high school and college. I played high school ball at Wilson High School in Florence, South Carolina, and college football at South Carolina State University in Orangeburg, South Carolina. And one of the, I played wide receiver. One of my favorite times of the game, one of my favorite drills, if you will, was the drill that we call the two minute drill. Now, in the two minute drill, uh, basically it's the end of the, at the end of the first half or at the end of the game where you need to drive the ball down the field. Um, you have, you're not huddling. You more often you're calling the plays at the line of scrimmage. You're up against the clock and you're trying to score before either the half ends or the game ends. And the two minute drill was always fun for me because it's, it's so chaotic. It's so chaotic. And, and what it does is because we practiced it so much, You want to practice it so when you get in the game, the game, the pressure of, hey, we could win this game or we could lose this game at this particular moment, that the moment's not too big for you, right? And so that's one of the things that I loved about running the two-minute drill. 
And I really, really love the two minute drill when we were the away team. So you got the crowd yelling. Let's just say it's the end of the game. You're running the two minute drill. You're down by five points. You got to go 80 yards. So that means you got to get a touchdown. And the crowd's yelling, and you got one timeout, and you all of the odds are against you. The thing that I learned about the two minute drill, as far as I was concerned, was that I was able to focus probably more so than I ever did or it better than I ever did at any other point in time in the game because all I could do was block out the noise. And the only thing that I could hear was myself breathing. That's it. I could hear the quarterback signals. That was it. I never heard the crowd. I never heard anything else. And I relish those moments because they're, they're, they're few and far between, but I always go back to something that my high school coach, uh, Coach Wells, rest in peace, used to say, you know, you have to keep your head in the midst of chaos. And I don't know what what made him say that to me. He he said that to me when I was a junior in high school, and that's always stuck with me to this day. So even in turbulence, so when you have bad things that happen, when you have a loss of job, when you have a divorce, you have you lost a loved one or something goes wrong, horrifically wrong. Can you maintain a level of sanity and a level of focus as everything around you appears to be crashing or as everything around you appears to be going awry? Can you stay focused? Can you hone in on what it is that you need to do to get out of that situation? It's turbulence on the ground, but can you get out of that turbulence? Or will you stay in it? Or will you let the pressure of that turbulence cave in and cave in on you. Some people, the moment's too big for them. For me, again, on the football field, I relish those times. And I think one of the things, I always say like football has transferable skills. I think that was a transferable skill because I think no matter what happens in my life, I'm never too high or too low. I'm always somewhere in the middle. And I I think I got that from, you know, being able to handle turbulence on the ground, if you will, and just being able to keep calm. Even in the most dire situations, you got to maintain some level of calm because here's the thing. Somebody's going to be freaking out. (laughs) Somebody's going to be freaking out. So don't let that be you. If, 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 If you're like, I'll use my wife and I as an example, as a couple, she'll be the one to freak out. I need to be the calm head. I just need to be. Um, And that's usually the way it works. And it's kind of worked out like that for us. Um, Question number three and final question. Um, You survived the turbulence. Now what? And that's very apropos, particularly on the flight. Because, you know, We've seen movies, we've seen videos of, you know, pe- people experiencing very bad turbulence to where the airbags drop down from the ceiling and people get roughed up and flights, you know, dropping a couple of thousand feet at a time or something like that. Uh, and usually the people who get hurt or banged up are the ones who don't have their seat belts on, who aren't seated. Because, you know, again, normally more often than not, the pilots know when the turbulence is coming. And they give you a forewarning. Hey, seatbelt sign is on. Do not move about the cabin. Sit your tail down. We're about to hit some rough air. And, you know, turbulence in the air, at least from what I've experienced, it doesn't necessarily have to be because you're going through a storm or you're going through a hurricane or anything like that. It could be a clear blue day. Sky could be clear you know, and you could see for miles and you could still see or feel turbulence in a plane. It happens. I've, I've had it happen to me several times, not anything bad, but I mean, it just happens. It could be wind shifts over, you know, flying over the mountains or something, who knows, but it happens. So getting back to the question, you survived the turbulence. Now what? And so for me as a, someone who flies, flies frequently, uh, you know, you, you're kind of reminded like, Hey, it's going to be okay. Like <laughs> the plane ain't going to crash. At least you don't think that it will. 
And if it does, then, you know, you'll survive the crash. At least that's what I tell myself, right? Um, but yeah, it, it's, that's, that's how it is. Like, it's, it's going to be okay. Like, you, you're going to survive. Like, you just have to remind yourself in the moment of the turbulence in, in air, it's going to be okay. It may not feel like it. It may feel like the turbulence is lasting forever. It's trust me, it's not right. But you got to remember that you're going to be okay. Is you're going to survive. Um, you made it, and the flight wasn't that bad. So you know, that's what it is. And the same applies on the ground in real life. I mean, if you live long enough, you're going to go through some rough patches in life. I mean, that's just. It's a circle of life. I don't believe that, like, we're all doomed or people, you know, just bad things just continually happen to bad people or people have bad luck. I don't ever, I don't know if I ever prescribe to that thought process. But, you know, I I think that there are times where we can, you know, kind of go on a little bad run and, you know, things may disappoint us and things may not shake in our favor. I think that, that, could that happen? I think that's very possible. That's very plausible. Um, at the same time, you know, it's like the old saying, <laughs> tough times don't last. Tough people do, right? So I think as long as you remind yourself that, hey, whatever I'm going through, I'm going to survive. It may not, I may not be the same person on the other side of this turbulence, but, but, but I'm going to be okay. And I think if you remind yourself that, I think you'll be able to handle certain situations a little bit better, maybe different than you did the previous ones. It just depends. Um, But I think that's very key is just to remind yourself that you are going to survive. You didn't die, (laughs) right? Uh, And I mean, you know, particularly if you're on a plane, you made it to the ground <laughs> safely. So, you know, you're off to the next flight, you know? So that's, that's usually how it works. Uh, in conclusion, I just, like I said, I wanted to talk about turbulence because I think there's a, a very strong correlation between what happens in the air and what happens on the ground. And I think ultimately it really just depends on how we view it, how much we're prepared for it and how we handle ourselves when it comes. Uh, again, even as someone who flies frequently, you know, I don't like turbulence. I, I don't. <laughs> I would prefer a smooth flight no matter where I'm going. I am sometimes I overly obsessed about, you know, the weather and where I'm going and things of that nature. I mean, and I've flown in, hadn't really flown in a lot of um, a lot of storms, but I mean, I've flown into places like Minneapolis where there was you know, a couple of feet of snow on the ground. So you're worried about runways and you're worried about, you know, planes getting de-iced and stuff before you take off. And, you know, so it it happens. And I remember one time flying across the country and uh, I think we were coming like over Oklahoma and there were some tornadoes. But I mean, like, and that plane was rocking. I mean, we weren't flying through the tornado, but there were some tornadoes in the area above which we flew. So, you know, it just, it happens. You know, but can you prepare yourself? Uh, same for life on the ground. Can you prepare yourself for the turbulence? Can you prepare yourself for the rough times? Can you not lose your mind when things go crazy? There are going to be people that are going to lose their mind. Don't let you be the one. Be the calm, cool, collected one. And then ultimately, just know that whatever you're going through, you're going to get through it, be it on the plane or on the ground. You're going to get through it. And then you have to ask yourself, was it that bad? (laughs) Did you die? No, you survived. And that'll give you the strength and the confidence to move forward because the next time, and there will be a next time, you'll be okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for me. Thank you for checking out this edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast. The podcast drops every Thursday at midnight. From time to time, we drop bonus episodes on Sundays at midnight. Uh, If you're on social media, follow me, follow me, follow me. Social media on all the Twitter X, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, at 12Kyle. 
12 Kyle podcast also on TikTok uh, at 12 Kyle podcast. Um, if you feel so inclined, you want to shoot us a couple of dollars. Hey, we'll take it. Dollar sign T W E L V E K Y L E. Uh, check the YouTube channel, subscribe there as well. Like and comment. Uh, feel free to comment. We love reading comments. Um, there's audio as well as a video uh, of each and every episode. Again, that's going to do it for me. I am your boy, 12 Kyle. I'll catch you guys next time. 5,000.